the creators of YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name's Chris, I'm a graphic designer based in Melbourne, and today I'm going to be showing you guys my top six tips for Adobe Illustrator. Now, I'm gonna go just a little bit in depth because I don't wanna rush it. I do genuinely wanna teach you guys how I use these functions. Uh, and how you can master them uh, most effectively to ultimately increase your workflow when creating designs. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer and get started. Okay, so tip number one. This is rounding corners. How to basically make a corner turn uh, to a round beveled edge. So very simple stuff. What you're gonna do is uh, create your square here, just for example. Then you get your direct selection tool, which is your white arrow in the top corner. Highlight that, uh, click on your object, and you will see uh, these blue and white dots that appear in the corners. If you actually grab these, if the whole object is selected and you grab just one, then it will grab all of them. You pull them in, release your click, and you'll find that you will be dragging your corners in. If I just want to select a singular point, then I can just click on the anchor point itself, and I can click on this one down here by holding shift together. And then I can drag these two at the same time, creating a completely different shape altogether. Now keep in mind that your points do stop at the anchor points in which the uh, beveled corner actually interacts with first. So as you can see here, I've created a shape. I've just placed a anchor point there. And so when I go to click on this anchor point and curve it, it's actually not letting me uh, go any further than this anchor point here. So uh, just keep in mind if you're trying to make things a bit round by using this tactic, you want to be uh, subtracting all the anchor points in which are going to get in the way. As you can see here, I can pull it all the way now until it reaches this anchor point down the bottom. The last and final thing with this point is the fact that you can only select 80 points at the same time. So if I just go create 5, 10, 20, so we've got 80 points here. I can select all of them, click, click my direct selection tool, which is A on, uh, as the shortcut on the keyboard, and as you can see, it's prompting me to use all of them. But if I click, if I just drag and select one more, then as you can see here, it's not prompting the uh, blue and white circles anymore, uh, which is very frustrating at times, but there is a way around it. You can just do them in sections. One section, two sections. Fantastic. Alrighty, so tip number two. I use this all the time, constantly, every single day when it comes to uh, my Illustrator um, adventures, I guess. It's the Pathfinder tool. So I always have it just positioned up here at times or maybe even in the middle if I'm referring to it a lot. Um, but I'll show you how you can go find it. So you come over here, go Windows, uh, come all the way down to the bottom and go to your Pathfinder tool. Then it'll appear as a little uh, dialog box uh, which you can then interact with. So how does it work? Well, I only use two main functions. Uh, I use this one, which is called Divide, and this one, which is called Unite. And they basically act as a cookie cutter. Well, Divide acts as a cookie cutter and Unite basically merges objects together. So if I just change this color, I'll change this one as well. I'm gonna just bring this in the middle here. If I click uh, divide, then as you can see, I've now got three different shapes based on the lines that are going over each other. Very, very handy. If I wanted to combine them again, I'll put them back in their original places. I'll just highlight them both and click unite. Now this is just one complete shape. As you can see, we've got our round corners here. So you can uh, really kind of manipulate objects, combine them, subtract them, uh, just depending on where all the lines are. I use this all the time in my vector art. So definitely start to integrate this into your design skills. All right, so tip number three is the align tool. This tool allows you to distribute and line up shapes equally and uh, distribute them with the same amount of gaps across all of all the shapes that you're working with. So again, I'm just gonna do some uh, random squares. This time, I'll just put them all over the joint. Let's just see what happens. Alrighty, so I'm gonna highlight all of them. Now this up here is your align selection. You can also access it through the Windows tab. You're gonna come down to align and you've got something very similar uh, to your Pathfinder. So what 
Uh, how do you use it? Highlight all of your objects. Make sure that they are ungrouped. If they are grouped, then they will disappear. See you later, it's gone. So you need to make sure everything's ungrouped uh, just to achieve maximum efficiency. Um, fantastic. Now I'm gonna click this one here, which is the horizontal align center. Lines up everything in the middle. Fantastic. Now I wanna line them up so that they've got a little bit of gap in between them. Um, so I'm just gonna put my top and my bottom, which is the uh, basically the start and the finish point of where the other squares are gonna go into. I'm gonna come over here and I uh, click this one here, which is vertical distribute center. And as you can see, we've got uh, perfectly in the middle, uh, distribute equally within two clicks. Now I'm just gonna show you guys again, just quickly, what happens if I wanted to do it horizontally. We'll highlight all of them. Uh, we'll go over here, vertical align center, and then we'll go again, this one over here, horizontal distribute center. And there you go. All right, so tip number four is the magic wand tool. This tool basically lets you distribute and equally space out shapes uh, really easily. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a few more shapes. Uh, I'm gonna make these just different colors and I'm gonna show you how it works. Now, this is super handy if you're making vector art and you wanna play around with different colors without manually having to go back and click every single one and change them. I'll make this one just a different kind of red. Fantastic. Alrighty, so uh, it's located just up here in your top left hand bar, Magic Wand Tool. And if you click on them, uh, it basically allows you to select similar colors. And now this is based on your tolerance. So if you just triple click or double click uh, the Magic Wand Tool, you'll get your settings just up here. Um, and you can see your tolerance number here. If I go to zero, it means that the, the only uh, colors in which will be highlighted are the ones that are exactly the same in regards to their hex number So if I come over here uh, Make the same shape with the same color click that it's going to highlight both of them um, Whereas if I increase my tolerance just a little bit We'll go to uh, we'll go to 60 kind of similar to where we were before um, I'll click on this orange as you can see it's uh, resonated the fact that the burnt orange is quite similar in tolerance level and it's, as a result, it's gonna highlight the two. If I increase it a little bit more, say 200, uh, then we're gonna get a very wide variety. There you go, it highlights all of them. So um, play around with that a little bit. It'll definitely help you pick similar colors and change them to something else. All right, so tip number five, this one's pretty straightforward and very easy. I use it every single time I jump on Illustrator and I think you've already probably noticed me using it uh, within this tutorial. Uh, it's called the duplicate tool. So I just did it then. If you come in, click a shape, you hold down the Alt key on Windows uh, and if you basically just drag and drop, always holding down that Alt key, then you will uh, duplicate your shape. I'm just going to do it again and show you how efficient you can be. Uh, I usually have uh, hold this down in conjunction with the shift key so that I'm always making my shapes uh, come at the same length. Perfect. As you can see, I'm able to create multiple shapes just through a few clicks of the button, holding down the shift and alt key. Everything's in center. Everything's lined up. Uh, very efficient. It'll definitely help your workflow if you integrate this. Alrighty, so tip number six, this is how to send things to the back or to the front uh, within your layering system, uh, within a shortcut, just a few clicks. So I'll quickly make a few uh, just boxes again. And I know this is very basic, but the fundamentals remain the same throughout any form of design. Um, you come over here, you click, we'll click this blue square. What I'm gonna click is Control, Shift, and then I'm gonna click this little bracket. I'll put a photo up on the screen, what it looks like. And you just click that, and it's now centered to the back. Uh, and you can do the same. And I'll bring it to the front. There you go. So now, Control Shift and the other bracket brings it to the front. Um, this helps so much when I'm uh, creating uh, vector artwork, trying to send shapes to the front and the back so that they can be visible or not by uh, you know the viewer. And uh, it definitely, definitely helps my workflow when I uh, am creating this kind of artwork or even just any form of design work. Fantastic, and that's my top six tips in regards to increasing your workflow uh, when using Adobe Illustrator. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, drop a like, or if you have any questions or are a bit confused in regards uh, to the functionalities that I've just taught you, 
then please feel free to drop a comment. I'm more than happy to help everybody. Um, and yeah, once again, thank you very much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Oh,